Okay, folks, let's talk about using Google Analytics to find the best days and times to be active on LinkedIn. This is a relatively straightforward thing to do with a couple of caveats. Number one, if you have a set scheduled uh, time that you're posting on LinkedIn, then your results are going to be biased towards that time. So you would ideally set up a testing period and uh, publish on a regular basis throughout the day for you know seven or fourteen or thirty days before you ran this particular uh, analytics report. Otherwise, you're going to have a bias in your data, and we'll we'll actually see that. Uh, and the second thing is, don't take the data from this and make. Uh, blind, unfounded con conclusions like, well, clearly the best day in time is uh, Thursdays at 3 p.m., therefore we should always post there, and, and don't worry if you, you don't post anywhere else. Chances are there's not going to be a best day in time. There's going to be good and bad times to uh, post on LinkedIn. And even then, that's not always crystal clear. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at, at how to get this information. We're going to go to customization in Google Analytics and set up a new report. We'll just call this best times for LinkedIn. And for our metric, we'll start with unique visitors. We want to see how many people are coming to our website from LinkedIn. We'll start with, let's start with time. Let's do hour of, hour of the day. And we need to add a filter. The source matching the regular expression, LinkedIn. LinkedIn.com, LNKD.IN, which is another one of their uh, URL shorteners. Hit save. Let's go to our chart here and make a nice little set of high gra of uh, bar charts. Now we see there is a definite <clears throat> day and time, or there's a definite time here at 9 a.m., then 10, 11, 12, 1 p.m., 3 p.m., and so on and so forth. This initially looks like a very clear-cut result until you realize there is a bias in this result. I post using uh, Buffer and or Hootsuite, and what I post on LinkedIn is scheduled from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. So there is a natural logical bias. Um, I don't post typically on LinkedIn outside of those hours. This logical bias means that this is, of course, going to be the best time of day. So you need to have done the testing first in order to you know have a post scheduled every three to four hours on LinkedIn and just you know sharing six or eight things a day until you get that data. And here's the other catch with this. Because we're measuring website traffic from LinkedIn, at least a significant portion of those posts need to have links to your website so you can see who's clicking through and actually visiting you. If you don't have that, if you're if you're curating stuff then you may have fantastic performance on LinkedIn in terms of engagement or impressions, um, but you won't see it in this data because those people never actually made it to your website. So be aware of that. There are some uh, this, this data initially looks blindingly obvious, but it, it really isn't. There are some subtleties to it. If I wanted to look at this, I might say, hmm, there's a there's some time here, um, you know, at four and five a.m. It looks like it could grow, and logically that makes sense because. I have a number of folks who are connected with me from uh, the UK and from uh, Western Europe. This is 9 a.m. This is the start of their work day. Um, so we, uh, if I wanted to really test things out, I could set up uh, some scheduled posts to go even in the middle of the night because just because I'm not awake doesn't mean the rest of the planet is. Um, likewise, in the evening here, we see uh, some uh, additional activity, and this, these would be uh, reflective of our friends uh, in, say, Australia or uh, Asia, uh, just starting their work days. So there's some potential there to, uh, to grow the audience as well. Where would I start testing? I'm going to switch to this graph first and see. Now down here, it's, you know, there's, there's a whole, not a whole lot of activity, whereas up here on this side, there's the, the huge, big wins. Right in the middle, in the, where the inflection point changes from, from positive to negative, are areas where I might start testing next. Maybe should set, I should start testing in mid-afternoon, late to mid-afternoon, or early evening, and see if I get some additional growth there um, by posting during those times. Those might be some good opportunities for additional testing to see if I can grow the audience there. So let's now switch this over. We're going to edit this. And we're going to go to, instead of hour, we're going to go day of week by name. 
hit save. And once again, we see that there are some definite uh, definite biases here. We see that uh, Thursday is uh, the most popular day, followed by Tuesday, then Wednesday, Mondays, and Fridays. Again, biases in this data because I post socially uh, throughout the week, the work day week, and not a whole lot on the weekend. So of course, I'm not going to see a whole lot of activity during those times. As a result, I might want to try posting something different on Fridays if I'm not getting a whole lot of traction. Uh, I might want to try posting at different times on Fridays if people are in the work days. And it might be worth testing some postings on, on the weekend just to see if I get a different crowd. And what do I mean by that? Let's edit this report. I want to add a, an additional metric. In this case, I'm going to, let's do goal completions. Hit save. Now, I know I've got a bug in my uh, analytics code on my website. I've yet to get around to fixing it. <clears throat> but imagine this <laughs> wasn't a bunch of zeros here. Imagine there were different numbers here, the percentages of unique visitors. The best day for traffic, or the best time for traffic, might not be the best day or time for conversions for people doing what we want them to do. Thursday, uh, I'll give you a uh, hypothetical example. Let's say this was you had 66 visitors on Thursday, but one completion. You had uh, 60 visitors on Tuesday, we had three completions. There'd be an additional opportunity to do some testing to say, hmm, what could I do to drive additional traffic from LinkedIn on Tuesday and see if Tuesday is a better converting day? And possibly a better day to, uh, to to get some business done rather than Thursday where people are just looking for a diversion. Not that there's anything wrong with people reading your blog posts uh, for a diversion or uh, you know, for brand awareness. Those would be all good things to have. But if I'm looking for direct response marketing for lead generation, my the day I might want to pay attention to would be the day where conversion rates are the highest. And I might want to experiment to pump some additional traffic to the site from, uh, from LinkedIn uh, based on that. One other thing that you will probably want to do if you are, are, are um, running LinkedIn advertisements, uh, you'll probably want to include a filter here. Uh, let's do a campaign. And you'll probably want to either include or exclude your campaign tags. I use uh, CPC in all of my URLs to indicate that it's a pay-per-click uh, campaign. But you'll want to include that or exclude that so that you will know you're looking at organic data versus paid data because you may get very different results based on which you choose. So this is figuring out best days and times for posting on LinkedIn. And of course, you could adapt this to any social media service, uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Pinterest, Instagram, you name it. Whatever the case is, you can use this uh, reporting methodology in Google Analytics. Thanks for listening, and please feel free to, uh, if you don't already, follow me on Twitter at CSPen and visit my website at ChristopherSPen.com. Thanks for watching.